Today on the newscast, a rare and exclusive look inside a Hezbollah terror tunnel with the Israel Defense Forces. That's coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. In a minute, we're going to head to the Israel-Lebanon border for an exclusive look deep underground inside a Hezbollah terror tunnel with the Israel Defense Forces. That's coming up in a minute. Before we go there, a quick update. Last night, Israel reportedly carried out more airstrikes inside Syria. Now, this time around, the strikes targeted Hezbollah weapons depots reportedly around the city of Homs in the western half of Syria. Syrian official state media, controlled, of course, by the Assad regime, an avowed ally of Iran and Hezbollah, says that Syria's uh, anti-missile defense systems shot down the Israeli missiles. That is highly unlikely. So again, Hezbollah weapons depots targeted last night by Israel. Of course, this follows another airstrike in Syria. This time it was in northern Syria around the city of Aleppo. That was Monday night, July 19th, late night. Israel targeting Iranian weapons depots around that city. That was the Syrian portion of the tensions this week, but move over to southern Lebanon, where shortly after those Israeli airstrikes Monday night in and around Aleppo, and we talked about this, by the way, on the Watchman newscast. You can check it out in our July 20th newscast. Just pulled up right here in our archives on YouTube. Following that strike Monday night, two rockets were fired from southern Lebanon into Israel. Now, thankfully, the rockets did not hit their mark. One fell into an empty field and the other was shot down by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. The rockets were apparently fired by a Palestinian terror group operating in southern Lebanon under the watchful eye, no doubt, of Hezbollah. Now, speaking of Hezbollah and Lebanon, I recently traveled to the Israel-Lebanon border for that exclusive look inside a Hezbollah terror tunnel. We were with Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus of the Israel Defense Forces. And folks, this was very rare access that we were granted by the IDF. Now, this tunnel was one of a network that was uncovered by the IDF in late fall, early winter 2018. Six tunnels in all, dotting the Israel-Lebanon border. The IDF destroyed five of the tunnels, but they kept the largest one open. That's what you'll see today. This tunnel goes over 200 feet underground. It took Hezbollah over four years to dig it and over $5 million to fund it. And the goal was for elite Hezbollah fighters to transit from the Lebanon side underground and pop up on the Israeli side where they could slaughter Israeli civilians and potentially seize an Israeli town or village, plant that Hezbollah flag for the world to see and earn a great propaganda victory in their view. So thankfully the IDF was able to neutralize these tunnels before they went operational, but the tunnel you are about to see very nearly did go operational. And as you'll see, it had wiring, it had an intercom system this was not something cheap dug into the ground. This was a serious Hezbollah operation with the full knowledge and also some funding by its patron, the Iranian regime. Let's head to the Israel-Lebanon border now for an exclusive look. And a quick note, folks, the man you see at the top of this clip wearing all black and taking pictures and videoing us, he is a member of Hezbollah who was positioned there on the Israel-Lebanon border and watching our every move. Take a look. So Eric, welcome to a Hezbollah tunnel. Everything you see around you is how Hezbollah left it. We've added a few features for security. Yeah. safety, uh, the, the roof above you, but all of this, all the drill marks, this piece of equipment, and most importantly, this big drill bit, I don't know if drill bit is the right word, yes. but this is basically a cup that was connected to a, uh, an electric drill, right? And this is how they excavated in solid rock. You can see the size here. They would drill, 
that would turn and then they would pull the drill out, knock yeah. the piece off with the hammer, right? And then they would take that slab of stone and transport it through the tunnel into Lebanon and then secretly try to disperse that, that all of the debris inside Lebanon as far as, we, as they could without us noticing. Now obviously they failed in that because we monitored where they were operating from and we had a good idea where the tunnel was. That's one of the indicators that led us to understand that there was a tunnel here. Yeah. But if you look around and if you check out the amount of effort, each yeah. cup, right, <laughs> it takes maybe half an hour to drill, yeah. see how many places they've drilled, and once we'll go down and you see, you'll see the tunnel, you'll see how deep it is, how far it goes, and the amount of effort that Hezbollah put into having this kind of tunnel. Four years worth. At least. At least. At least. Four years worth, at least five million US dollars, the equivalent of, and that's without taking into account, you know, how to hide it, the compartmentalization, and the fact that they paid, of course, their, uh, the, the, the personnel, Without factoring in that, only the time of e equipment, time, fuel, and the effort to get the debris out. That, yeah. by the way, was what determined how fast they could excavate. How fast they could excavate wasn't determined by the technical capability of the yeah. power tools. They could have done it much faster, but they were trying to be stealthy and clandestine. At the end of the day, that didn't work out, thankfully. And we were able to monitor what they were doing. And once we launched our operation, we did it fast, simultaneously, yeah. in different directions. And we immediately engaged with all of the tunnels. This one, as I said, took a lot of time to find. But eventually, we found it. And uh, we uh, basically rendered it useless. Yeah. Let's go down and have a look. You want to watch your head? You and I, we yes. got to be careful here. It, essentially, most of the time, it's OK. But you got to yeah. be careful. It wasn't made for six foot three or <laughs> seven feet men. Yes. You can see on the way, original Hezbollah infrastructure, the wiring is wow. original. This is Hezbollah, uh, electrical work. Electrical work, we've added, again, for safety, yeah, the sure. lead lighting, which Hezbollah didn't have. But, but these steps that we're walking on, this is all Hezbollah crafted. This is a place where they did a turn. You see they yeah. went up this direction, excavated to the side so that they had room to pivot, and then chose a different direction. And very different from those Hamas tunnels, which we mentioned earlier, because this is rock, and they are in sand, those Hamas tunnels? Yes, sand yeah. or sandstone, gotcha. which is very weak, and that needs to be supported. Here, in solid rock, there's no such challenge, right? It yeah. supports itself. And the only challenge that they have is that they have to excavate, drill through it. Yes. Which is different. And but harder I think, for airstrikes, I, I guess. And to... unfortunately, much better protected. Unfortunately. For them. Yeah. For them, yes. So let's continue down. You see the ventilation system here, the air pipes. That's original Hezbollah. Now we have connected our fresh air supply. You can feel the air coming out here. Yeah. Yeah, that's fresh air that we're pumping from above ground and connecting into Hezbollah's pipe, so that now that we go down, you and I, we have a supply of okay. oxygen and uh, the other gases are pumped out. A very intricate operation by Hezbollah here. Intricate, deliberate. They are pros. Well-funded and clearly they knew what they were doing here. Yeah. And the funding comes from, at least some of it, well, the funding is uh, partially Hezbollah's own generated money. Yes. And uh, partially Iranian funds. Yes. Because this was a very secret and compartmentalized project. Mm -hmm. They were very careful about the sources of funding. This, by the way, is original Hezbollah lighting, the, uh, the, the, the light here, the bulb. That's original infrastructure that they left behind. And now we're going to go down the last flight, another left turn. Just in NASCAR, just like NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> and rest assured, the Iranian regime was very aware of this project. Definitely aware. Not only aware, but guiding and uh, uh, providing, uh, uh, as, as I said, money. Yes. So unlike precision-guided missiles that Iran has the knowledge and Hezbollah doesn't, tunneling is actually quite an expertise of Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. So they didn't need much outside uh, expertise because yes. they've got lots of years of experience with that. Mm -hmm. Now we're nearing, we're almost at 170 uh, feet depth. Wow. 
Thanks again to Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus and the Israel Defense Forces for that rare and exclusive access inside a Hezbollah terror tunnel for our Watchmen team. Hey, if you want to see the entire show, that's just a clip. That's just one segment. The entire show from the Hezbollah terror tunnel on the Israel-Lebanon border airs tonight on TBN. Tonight, Thursday, July 22nd, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, folks, you will not want to miss this. I truly believe this is one of the most important shows that we have ever done. That clip where it ended is not where the show ends. We go even deeper into that tunnel, and you will be shocked by what we find at the bottom. Again, tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Also a rebroadcast Friday, July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss it. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.